Hey Rockstars, welcome to Recording Studio Rockstars. On this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Reference 4 Studio from Sonarworks so that you can get killer mixes in your studio. Awesome, if this is your first time here, please remember to subscribe below hit the like button and hit the notification bell so that you can get more videos from Recording Studio Rockstars. All right, if you saw my previous video, we did an unboxing of the Sonarworks XREF20 microphone, and now we're going to install the software and get everything hooked up so that it works in Pro Tools, so that it works in my studio, and I'll show you just how we get to shoot out the speakers with the mic, and you're gonna see the whole process. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install Reference 4 Studio onto the Mac. I have a Mac Pro. This will install on a Windows computer as well. You need to download it from the website. And then when you do the install process, especially on Macintosh with my High Sierra, you have to go into System Preferences also and allow it to install the extension. All right, so here we are at the starting page for Reference 4. The software is gonna walk us through the whole process of getting this installed properly and making sure everything works. So it's really great. They give you an easy to do checklist. So let's start at the beginning. First, it wants us to measure our speakers. We're gonna to click on this right here. This is going to take us to the next page and it's going to give us a complete checklist for hardware setup, which is great. So they don't want us to miss anything. So they're going to make it easy for us to go through this process of getting it started. First thing we do is check fan and power. 48 volts is switched on and powering the measurement mic. So I'm going to click that because I've already done that here with my mic. Here's my mic. Here's my XREF 20 microphone. Okay, my mic pre is on. I've got fan and power going on the mic. No problem. Okay, so the next one here says to make sure your microphone input is not routed directly into your speaker outputs. All right, so basically with my system, I have a Pro Tools HDX system to go out the speaker, so I don't have to worry about that. But if you're using something like Universal Audio with the built-in um, UA mixer, or if, you know, the Apollo mixer, or if you're using uh, PreSonus or one of these other ones where you have a mixer that happens first, sometimes you can have the input signal routed directly to the headphones. In that case with this, you'd need to make sure that was turned off so you don't get a feedback loop. So we'll click that and we'll move on. And then it says a single audio interface is used for mic input and output to speakers. Okay, great. So I'm using the same audio interface. Audio interface sample rate is set to exactly 44.1 kilohertz. And I was able to do that, but in my case, if I'm gonna use the HDX Pro Tools outputs, um, I have to go into the audio MIDI settings, select that as an output for the system output, and then I just select 44.1 kilohertz as the sample rate and make sure that that's set up properly. So just make sure that you've got 44.1 1K. And then it reminds you here that it's going to take about 20 minutes to actually do this measurement process. Make sure you got enough time to complete it before you got to do something next. All right, so we'll hit the next button. Now, this is really important. When they send you the Sonarworks XREF 20 measurement microphone, they actually send you one that's been calibrated at the factory. So they want to know the exact ID number of my microphone because they've already got a measurement profile on file over the internet that they're going to match my mic up with. So I went ahead and put in my mic number here. You can just find that right on the mic. Now you can use a different measurement microphone if you have a mic that's flat already, but you're going to get the most accurate measurement if you use the XREF mic, which comes straight from Sonarworks. Click the next button, and here it shows me what my mic looks like. I'm going to get a much flatter response because I'm using a mic that came from Sonarworks, this XREF 20. So let's click on to the next one. And at this point, you're going to need to select your input for the microphone and your outputs go into the speakers. And in my case, I'm using the Avid HDX. So I just selected channel one as an input and then channel one and two as outputs. There's the Avid HDX output channel one and two. Now, the next thing you can do is you can actually play a test track to make sure the audio is coming out of the speakers. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. All right, great. So it's telling me that that voice coming out of my speakers should sound about normal conversation volume. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Now you can hit the next button and move to the next page. All right, so this is where it starts to get real interesting. We're gonna adjust the microphone input gain so that we can make sure we detect the microphone correctly during measurement. Click next. During the measurement process, we're gonna hear chirping sounds from our speakers, and it says, don't worry, we use these sounds to locate the microphone in your room. So there's sounds that come out of each speaker, and that actually locates where the microphone is in the room. I'll play the signal so you can hear it. 
Pretty cool. Sounds like the plan Space Invaders. All right, so next up, it's showing us what we're gonna be expected to do. So there's a pair of speakers that are in the studio. You're gonna to wanna to have those lined up properly. Sonarworks does give you instructions on how to position your speakers in the room, get the um, equilateral triangle going. In my case, my speakers are actually 67 and a half inches from tweeter to tweeter, and the same thing about 67 and a half inches to my head. Now you'll notice I actually have a standing desk set up because I started working standing because I really enjoy it, and this allows me to shoot out the speakers so that from this standing position, I'm getting an accurate low end and an accurate flat response of my speakers, which is really cool. And then what it's going to have us do is stand here in approximately the listening position and hold the mic where the listening position is. So I'll be stepping back and holding the mic here so that it's in position for this whole testing that we're going to do. Uh, it says to keep the microphone within the listening spot. So hold the microphone at the same level as your ears when you're sitting in the listening position. In my case, I'm actually not going to be sitting. I'm going to be standing. So my ear level is about here. So I'm going to do the mic up high. But it's really amazing how well this works for whatever kind of mix position you want. All right, next up, it says keep the microphone at ear level. Great. Then it says aim it between the speakers. So between my speakers is right there. So I'm going to be always aiming the mic that direction. And then it says hold the mic away from your body. So don't don't be like this where your head is in the picture. Hold the mic out like this so that it's away from your body. I can't quite do it that far, but I'll probably be like this and you know hold my elbow to keep it steady. Okay, so next up we're going to adjust the mic input level and it's going to give us a test to make sure that everything's working just right for that. I've already adjusted my levels to be right because it's hard for me to step back from the camera to do this, but you'll see how when the levels are set just right, if you adjust your gain, then it's going to hit the sweet spot and start working. Love it. All right, so hit the done button. And now we're gonna determine the distance between the speakers. We're gonna make sure that we're not standing between the speakers, but standing to the side. In my case, I'll be leaning over the console from the side to hit this in front of the speaker and measurement. All right, we're gonna start with the left speaker and it says to position the microphone, you know, 0.4 to 0.8 inches away from the center of the mid-range driver, which is basically, you know, less than an inch. So pretty close. And then um, I guess I'm gonna go hold it and hit start measuring all at the same time. A little bit tricky, I'm gonna do this real quick. Same more, measure the progress. Left speaker done. We're gonna go do the right speaker now too. Same more, measure the progress. Right speaker done. Sweet! All right, let's see what's next. Now this says that my speakers are four feet and four inches apart. So in my case, we know that my speakers are 67 and a half inches apart, which is actually a recommendation from Carl Tatz, a guest on my podcast. So I just measured the distance of my speakers from the center of the mid-range cone to the center of the mid-range cone. And in fact, it's four feet and eight inches. So I know my tweeters are 67.5 inches, but the mid-range cone to cone is a little less because the way I've got the spe speaker set up in here. So that's what it's picking up on when Sonarworks is doing the measurement. So I'll adjust it for that. Okay, so it started out at four feet, four inches, and I'm gonna bring it up to four feet, eight inches, and we'll call it looks good from there. All right, so next thing it wants to do is locate the listening spot. We've measured the distance between your speakers. Now we need to determine where you normally sit while listening to your speakers. So I'm gonna do that and get that all set up. All right, cool. Again, I've got my mic. I'm gonna hold it in the sweet spot and let them start measuring. Cool, so that one's done. So let's move on to the next. It says to review the setup dimensions. So basically it's saying that it's four feet, eight inches from woofer to woofer, and then it's about five feet, four inches to where this spot is. But notice it picked them up as being equidistant on either side, so that's great. And it also confirms that my listening position is centered, so it knows that I've done a good job setting it up here. 
All right, cool. Listening area measurements. During this step, they're going to measure the listening area. This is where it gets real interesting. It's a long process. We're going to speed it up, but you're going to see me kind of doing the dance with the microphone as we move around the room looking for all these different measurement spots. Some of the stuff it's reminding us about, it says to keep the mic within the listening spot. It's going to play a signal here that is a locating signal that is going to allow us to put the mic within the circle that locates it. When it's located, then it's going to play the test signal, which is the thing that sounds like Space Invaders. Here's the locating signal. Again, sounds like we're getting attacked by space invaders. And then here's the test signal. Which basically just goes from very low frequency up to high frequency. And it's sending all that to the mic and it's gonna be able to measure that and see what the response is at that position. So we'll jump to the next thing. And we're gonna start clicking through and doing this measurement. So here we go. All right, so one of the things I'm doing is I'm putting on these earmuffs because it's about to get real loud for like 20 minutes in the studio. So I suggest you put in earplugs before you do this test because your speakers may need to be up loud enough to be pretty loud with this uh, low frequency to high frequency stuff. So we'll jump in here and we'll get this thing rolling. Wow, <laughs> that was intense, but that was a lot of fun. And I think I won. I think I may have gotten the high score possibly on this. I did notice a couple of spots were a little more difficult than others. Uh, for some reason right around here, maybe it's because I had this microphone in the way, I might want to move it during the test. But um, you could of course experiment with that in your studio. All right, cool. So we're going to go ahead and click the show results button and see how this thing turned out. Awesome. So you can see here on this graph, this is what the response of my studio, of my control room looks like between the left and the right speakers as well. So the left is this sort of darker blue one and the, the right is lighter blue. You can see already I've got a rolling off down at the lowest frequencies, which is, um, let's see, 21 hertz down at 21 hertz. You know, it's almost 12 decibels down and then it kind of goes up from there to uh, right at this point, 62 hertz. But then it takes a dip here and by 90 hertz, it's way down low. So that means that probably when I'm mixing, I'm probably pushing up 90 hertz too much. I'm pushing up the bass too much because I think there's not enough bass going on. And then it comes up and now we've, we're back at zero at 140, but then above 140, it really jumps up here too. And plus the two different speakers give me completely different results. So that would totally affect my perception of what's going on, you know, in the, the body range of different instruments, you know, 147 up to a dip at 250. Now, if you remember a lot of times mixing a kick drum, for example, you might want to pull some 250 in that area out. Well, what this means is my room might be doing that for me, giving the impression that I've already done this mix move to my kick, but I haven't actually. So it might be causing me to have sort of cloudier, muddy mid-range in my mixes, not realizing that it's because of my room. And then again, they split and they go apart here because my room's probably not perfectly symmetrical enough to give a match signal on left and right right there. Um, and then they match up really well right around... 440 hertz and then it dips again and then it goes above so it's this crazy crazy curve going on that is what my existing room is so sonarworks is going to take that curve and they're going to do an opposite curve and they're going to flatten everything out and straighten it for me so that when i'm standing at this mix position i'm getting more of an equal flat balance of all these frequencies I'm going to name this i'm going to call it studio ns tens and i'll give it the date too so that way i can name it and then it's going to want to save that into a location and you you can actually have a whole series of profiles saved. So you could do three different sets of speakers and flatten each one of them out so that no matter which speaker you listen to, you're still getting a flat response. All right, so let's also open up SystemWide, which is a separate app that will allow Sonarworks to work while you're listening to your system audio. So if you're watching YouTube videos, if you're listening to Spotify, if you're listening to iTunes, or you're just simply using the built-in computer output for your audio, turn on system-wide and you're gonna get the same effect through your speakers. It shows up on the very top of the menu bar here and here's the app version of it. The menu bar can show you what's going on. You can turn on the calibration right here. You can select your profile or add a new calibration profile. Just turn it on right there and now it's on. 
Also, they do an automatic level drop just a little bit to leave you some safety headroom in case they're having to boost some frequencies. When you boost frequencies, you don't wanna have your audio coming too hot out of the outputs of your converters because then you're gonna be clipping the outputs if it's trying to actually boost above your zero point. So they give you a little bit of safety headroom right there, which is pretty cool. You can also, also just turn that off if you want. And this is very cool. There's also a mono switch built right into this. So if you wanna quickly reference stuff in mono, even hear the headphones in mono, just click that on. And I, there's even a dry wet button. All right, so let's go over and we'll take a look at the Pro Tools version of this too. And I'll show you how that works. Cool, so I'm opening up a session here that I did with my band and we did a quick rough mix and I remember taking it to the car afterwards and I was all excited about the overdubs we had done and the mix came out and it was just like insane low end. The bass was horrible, the kick sounded terrible and I just had that frustrated sinking feeling that you have when you just screwed up your music because you've got the bass totally out of whack. It was partly because I was in a hurry, but it's also because my speakers just weren't making it really obvious to me. And it was easy for me to screw up and, and go too far with it. So here we are in Pro Tools. And then down here on the master fader, I just go here, click on the plugins, find Sonarworks in the list and add an instance of Sonarworks Reference 4. And it just shows up and then all my audio of my mix before it goes out of Pro Tools and then hits the speakers is gonna be going through the plugin, which means I can load my calibration here that we just did. Sonarworks shows the plugin what my speakers are already doing. Then I come down here, turn on Studio Reference. It does the compensation and it flattens out the entire response of my speakers. So you won't really be able to tell what's going on if you hear this on the other end because you'd have to have my speakers in my studio to really hear and appreciate the difference that it's making. But I'll give you a quick sample just so you can hear how it does change the sound a lot. So let me go to a chorus. The skies are bright. All right, so that's the mix with too much low end before I add the EQ curve. Now I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna guess that it's still gonna give you guys a sense of boosting a lot more bass. The skies are bright all through the night where the stars are. Where the... All right, so for me, it's immediately obvious. It just makes the whole bass and the pillowy kick drum just leap out. And that was the thing that I really had issue with in the car later on. So for me, hearing it like this in the studio, I would immediately pick up on that and I'd make adjustments to those different instruments and make sure that my mix sounded a whole lot better than it did. So pretty exciting stuff. I'm super thrilled to be mixing through it now. Can't wait to start getting my mixes right. Stay tuned and I'll start reporting back too about just how much happier I am with my mixes after I start mixing through Sonarworks. You can get this plugin and install it on whatever DAW you're working on. So no matter what you're using to make music, whether you use the studio version for your speakers or whether you just use the headphone version if you're mixing in headphones and you're gonna be able to start getting your mixes right so that when your first mix goes out the door, it's right the first time. You don't have to come back and do 10 more tweaks and revisions just trying to get the low end right. And that's gonna help all of us make better records. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. I know that for me, it was a pretty amazing experience to hear reference four on my speakers here in the studio and hear just how different that sound was. I immediately heard mixes where I would have completely done a different move on the bass and the kick drum and gotten the mix right the first time. If you wanna learn more about Reference 4, go to sonarworks.com. The link is included right below. Please remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and drop a comment in below and let us know what are some of the things you struggle with with your sound and mixes in your studio. Do you find that low end is a challenge or is it a breeze for you already? If you want to try out Reference 4 in your studio, go to sonarworks.com and download your free trial of the software. You can immediately put it to use on a pair of headphones that you already own. And if you want to get a microphone Phone, you can order one of their XREF calibrated mics and do the exact same test in your studio and get a million dollar sound on a home studio budget. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>